Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week's show goes into a whole load of different things, from Raspberry Pi retro game cartridges to cosplay, which is something we've never really looked into before, to a really innovative way to work with an already put together smart home system. So, no time to lose. Let's get going. We are starting this week's show with a project on the Electromaker website, which combines the Echobee smart thermostat system that is an already sort of put together smart home thing with a DIY setup using the Echobee API. One of the things I really like about this project is that taking already put together smart home devices and smart home hubs and integrating your own systems into them is sort of the dream as far as I'm concerned. A fully DIY system is something I do not have the time to do, but by the same token, I don't want to be completely uh, stuck in a pre-made ecosystem. And this project conveniently works around that. Now, like all good DIY smart home projects, this has a good reason to exist. And that is that Maker All Parts Combined uh, has a small child, and that small child's room is at the other end of the house. And they wanted a way to control the space heater that you see in this picture. Now the circuit used here is actually a fairly standard one you'll find in a lot of DIY smart home setups because uh, these things fit together so perfectly. You have an ESP8266 on a little development board here, it looks like a Node MCU kind of board, um, and it will be running a relay and of course the relay can run much more powerful things like lights or in this case a heater. Now this circuit alone will achieve a lot. It turns anything into an internet enabled device, but what makes this one interesting is the Ecobee API. As previously mentioned, there's an Ecobee thermostat in the house. And uh, Ecobee, in case you're not familiar, is a company a little bit like Nest. It's one of these companies that does a uh, pre-made smart home products and um, that are supposed to be easy for you to use for everybody. Um, and um, there's, there's a lot of good and some bad about things like this. Obviously there's privacy concerns. Um, and obviously for many people like us, we'd much rather try and make our own, but then time is always an issue. The API for this is quite nice though, because the smart thermostat used here um, has a temperature measurement on it, and by using the Ecobee API, um, they are able to uh, grab that temperature measurement and use it with their ESP8266. So rather than me go on anymore, I suggest you head to the Electromaker website and read all parts combined's post, or if you would prefer, you can watch the fantastic video they have made alongside it too. As always, I will leave a link to this in the description of this video. Now, just last week, we featured a talk by Zach Friedman of Voidstar Labs. Uh, he was talking about the dirty secrets that hardware manufacturers have in prototyping and in making their products. Um, but it's not the normal type of video that he makes on his YouTube channel. But just like that, he's put out another fantastic project. So, what is cooler than a Raspberry Pi 400? A Raspberry Pi 400 that's been turned into a wearable cyber deck for a dystopian future. Yes, um, this is, as you can see, a, a Raspberry Pi 400. Um, those handles you see on the side, they have batteries in them. There's a screen on the front, and there's a couple of other things about it that are absolutely awesome and cool. Um, just quick tangent here, quick side note. Um, you'll notice just above me, it says uh, that the custom Google Glass that he wears in all of his videos, if you've uh, watched any of them, you may have noticed, um, explaining that was the 1,000-ish subscriber special, and that was just four months ago. And he now has 158,000 subscribers, which is just fantastic. I'm so happy to see makers suddenly get so big and um, he makes some absolutely wonderful projects If you haven't checked out his channel already, please do um, this is an absolute deserved thing and Zach If you ever do see this congratulations, you make some absolutely wonderful videos. This is deserved fame anyway um, moving back to the thing uh, the two things about it that are very unique and very cool is, um, as mentioned, he has a custom Google Glass that is attached to his glasses that has its own computer in it. That's his uh, uh, teleprompter, I think you call it. Um, the uh, the second screen for this Raspberry Pi is uh, another one of those things. It attaches to your glasses and it has a little viewfinder in it. Um, and the other thing that is awesome is that just you can just see on the side there in Arial, there is a software-defined radio on it too. Um, this video is amazing. It, it shows you the idea behind the build and the design. It also is a little bit of a, a sort of vlog about them moving because uh, Zach and his partner have just moved across the country and now live in a, a place where he can have a much bigger lab. Um, and yeah, I look forward to seeing all the crazy stuff he comes up uh, with it. Uh, this is a relatively new channel to me and to the internet perhaps. Um, but uh, yeah, it is absolutely fantastic and this project and channel is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Moving over to the Arduino subreddit for something we've never really covered on the show before, which is cosplay. Now, um, cosplay is something that I have an interesting relationship with because I'm not necessarily a cosplay fan. I wouldn't go to conventions. Um, well, maybe I would. I just kind of lack the confidence to do so, frankly. But the actual making of these uh, costumes is something I find just astonishing, inventive, wonderful. Um, it combines uh, being incredibly crafty, for want of a better word. They're making works of art, but um, 
frequently uh, putting LEDs in there and microcontrollers. And in this case, as you're about to see, using LEDs and a very clever painting in a way to make a very, very evocative design. Because as you can see, when this lights up, it really does look like something special. It does have that sort of magical effect. It reminds me more of an effect you would get out of a computer game, which is apt because this is a Monster Hunter uh, cosplay. Um, again, a game I'm not all that familiar with, um, but uh, I don't need to know the game to tell you that this is awesome and definitely worth a watch. Anyway, as you can see, uh, the name of the creator um, is actually in this video quite smartly, so no one can steal it. Um, but I will leave a link to the uh, Arduino subreddit here. There's a few useful links in the comments as well. Um, but yeah, I just thought that uh, we never really covered stuff like this on the show before. I know this isn't necessarily um, everyone's thing, um, but I do think it is a really, really inventive part of our little world um, that we should look into every now and again to see what people are doing in it. So this is the part of the show where we usually have the mystery box competition, but this week we're doing something a little bit different. I recently reviewed for the Electromaker website this little device. Now this is called the Embedded Learner Board. Um, it is from moonshotjunior.com um, and it is quite a nice little embedded system for working with an Arduino. And this is what we are going to be giving away this week. Um, and before we go into how we're giving it away, let's have a slightly closer look at this thing. And here we are with camera number two, uh, handily placed down in front of me to make me look like a giant. Um, but yes, as you can see, this is a single PCB with a chock load of parts on it. It is, in many ways, an entire Arduino or Raspberry Pi starter kit uh, put together into one board. Um, now, you can see there's a number of things on here. That's a, a little vibration motor down here. Uh, you have a number of switches. Um, a little buzzer down here, a temperature sensor, a relay, obviously, as you can see, some LEDs, a seven segment display, and an LCD screen. I'm sure I've missed a few things, like there's an LDR in here somewhere too, that. Um, but one of the things about this that I found particularly nice is that down the side here, you have all of the header pins, um, but they're actually labeled specifically for the things on the board. They're not just your average set of GPIO pins because there's no microprocessor on this. This is designed to be used with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Um, as I mentioned, I have written a full review of this, and you can find that on electromega.io if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this is just such a lovely little thing that I thought it warranted its own special competition. So, as I mentioned, we're going to give this one away in a slightly different way. So the criteria for winning this are slightly different to the Mystery Box competition, although it's still very simple. If you are a subscriber to the Electromaker YouTube channel, all you need to do is leave a comment on this video saying what you've been up to as a maker recently, what you're working on, what you're thinking of making maybe, what interests you, and the hashtag ELB for Embedded Learner Board. And we will pick out of the people who use that hashtag in next week's video. Similar to the mystery box, but slightly different, we're going to kind of do both on different weeks because frankly, sometimes people want to know what they're winning in advance, and I understand that. So, if you would like to win this embedded learner board, say what you're up to, hashtag ELB, be a subscriber to the channel, and we will pick a prize on next week's show. Hey folks, Future Ian here. I realized when editing this that the review that I refer to throughout this section hasn't actually gone live on the Electromaker website yet, so I will give you a quick preview now. Uh, it's good? Yeah, okay, so on with the show. It is time for the part of the show we call Funding Website Things, and that's because we look at Funding Website at Things. And we are beginning on Crowd Supply with I Squared C Mini. Now this isn't a particularly new project. As you can see here, it was funded on January 16th last year in 2020, um, but it has just come back in stock and I thought I'd feature it because some of you might find it quite interesting. On the surface, I squared C Mini is very simple. It is a micro USB board. Uh, it is a micro USB port, sorry, um, and a quick connector that is Spark Fun's uh, very simple JST connector way of working with I squared C, um, and it connects your computer to I squared C devices. Simple as that. Um, typically, you'd use an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi for that. Uh, this allows you to just uh, attach your computer straight up to anything and get hacking away. Um, now, it has a C and C++ library. It has a Python library. It has its own dedicated GUI. It is very easy to use, and it is very very cheap. Um, as you can see, well, you can't because it's hidden by my face. Uh, the I squared C mini core, which is just the board itself, is $25. Um, and there is various other kit versions of this that you can get as well. As always, I will not waste time reading the website to you. You could read it for yourself. Um, but I found this one quite interesting and quite exciting. Um, immediately what jumps to mind to me is a very simple project that you could do with an Arduino, but with this you wouldn't need to, is to set up a little I squared C screen and maybe have little things like your CPU temperature, uh, stuff like that. I don't know. It's just the first thing that jumped into my head. I'm sure I could think of something more fun to do with it than that, actually. Um, but this is, uh, as I say, not a new project, but it is now back in stock, and I will leave a link to it in the description if you would like to go and support them by buying one. 
Moving over to Kickstarter with Open Grow Light. And as the name suggests, this is an open hardware and software project for creating your own smart growing system for herbs, plants, tomatoes, things like that. Now this project from ST Geotronics is not the first uh, growing project like this we've seen. Um, I even reviewed one uh, uh, several years ago which is of a very similar idea to this. But the thing I like about this so much is that it is, as I've mentioned, open hardware and software and designed to be a teaching aid as much as anything else. I can see kits like this being bought by schools or by parents and being put together with kids. Um, and also a fantastic uh, uh, resource for people that maybe don't live in a place with gardens. Um, we don't have a garden or a balcony. We are very lucky in that the part of the city we live in is very green we can get out into nature quite easily but that's not an option for many people um, and this would be a great way to actually introduce the idea of growing plants to younger people who maybe don't have the uh, access to gardens now at its core this project uses an Arduino Pro Mini along with various sensors to determine when the plant needs light, when it needs watering, all of those things. And there are various versions of it you can buy uh, to reflect that. If you already have, say for example, the Arduino, you can get a bare bones kit. Um, and uh, if you don't want to do that and you just want to get the PCB, you can get just the PCB alone. Or of course you can opt for getting a full kit. Now if you would like to support this project you can buy the PCB for $20 as it says here um, and there's a bare bones kit for $150. Uh, there are various kits that you can get of this project um, and I do think it is a project that deserves a bit of support. Um, and the main reason I do think that is because I didn't actually find this project on Kickstarter. No, I initially stumbled across this project while looking for things on Instructables that we could feature on the show. Um, and seeing this project, uh, I thought, yeah, that looks fantastic. That's something that we would probably feature on the show. Um, and this is a really good explainer of how it works. There are circuit diagrams for absolutely everything, um, and it gives you the full bill of materials and how you can put it all together. Um, now, it does mention the Kickstarter. It does mention they have a PCB for sale. Um, but I just thought this was such a nice approach. Um, this is You can't get more open hardware and software than teaching people how to make your thing before you're even asking for money for it, um, although they may have launched at the same time. To me, that doesn't particularly matter. I just thought this was a lovely project, and it is also a funding website thing, so it fits two uh, things for our show as well. Uh, very nice project. I will be leaving a link to both of these things in the description, the Instructables if you just want to read about the project itself, and the Kickstarter in case you would like to support them. Moving on to a few bits of news and cool projects and other stuff from this week, starting with Arduino Day. That's right, we briefly mentioned Arduino Day in last week's show, and they have since updated the blog with a few more details of what will actually be happening during the live stream, and it looks like it's going to be quite a fun event. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening during the day, and just to cherry pick a few things, they will be talking a little about the Nano RP2040 Connect, that is the new Arduino Nano shaped board which has the Raspberry Pi silicon on, very interesting to find out more about that. And they will be interviewing uh, the co-founders of the uh, Blue Box. Now, um, I will try and briefly cover this without butchering it because it's a wonderful thing. This is a, uh, a 3D printable box that can be uh, taken home and used in conjunction with an app to diagnose breast cancer in a non-invasive and private way. Now, um, breast cancer affects a ridiculous amount of people. It's something like one in five women. And as someone who has personally dealt with this in, in my immediate vicinity and, and, and seen the horror and the, the fear that it can cause, even in the best case scenario, I think it is a wonderful thing. And the project itself is is just it's inspiring, amazing. Right, I'll stop gushing and move on. Um, and of course, the Arduino IDE uh, 2 beta. We had a quick look at it on the show. I very quickly went through it. This will be a little bit more of a deep dive and the people behind it themselves will be able to tell you more about it. Now, of course, that is not all that is happening. Head to the blog post, read it. And of course, there is the uh, community aspect of it, the undistancing uh, hashtag or uh, theme or idea. Um, if you want to do a project for that, I'd be very interested in hearing what it is. I'd love to do a project myself. I don't know if I'm going to actually be free on that day to tinker. I hope so, though. And if I do, of course, I will brag about it on the show myself next week. But yes, Arduino Day is coming up and it looks like it's going to be real fun. Moving over to the Raspberry Pi blog and an update to the Raspberry Pi imager. Now, um, I have to admit, full disclosure, I'd never used the Raspberry Pi imager before. I have Etcher for this computer. I have the command line on Linux. Uh, why would I bother? Well, now there is a very, very useful feature. Yeah, the cool bit is this 
advanced settings menu. Now you get to it by holding Control Shift and X, and there's a few things here that you will find quite familiar. Um, so for example, being able to uh, enable SSH. Now you could do that before booting a Raspberry Pi before. You just drop a file named SSH into the boot sector of the SD card or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But now you can change the password as well very easily without having to fiddle around with anything, uh, which is fantastic news because there are an astonishing number of Raspberry Pis out there connected to important networks with the username Pi and the password Raspberry that no one thought to change. And, uh, and there's also a few nice quality of life things like being able to configure the Wi-Fi before setting it up. Again, you could do that before, but you had to go into configuration files and you could set the locale. It's just going to be a very nice, easy way to get new micro SD cards for Raspberry Pis up and running quickly. Anyhow, we'll link the blog post in the description, and if you do want to get the new Imager tool, it's on the downloads page of the Raspberry Pi site, or available through the advanced package tool on Linux. Now, we talked about the Compute Module 4 from Raspberry Pi quite a lot on last week's show, and one of the things that occurred to me is that its small size makes it perfect for fitting into ever smaller devices, like handheld retro game systems. And the one that came to mind specifically is this case from Retroflag. Now, this is designed to work with the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, and it fits the Pi Zero into like an old school cartridge that will slot into the top of the case. And of course, the Pi Zero will take care of various forms of emulation for you. Um, and it's almost as if the internet read my mind, because while mulling over all this kind of stuff, what pops up in my recommendations but a video from the always fantastic ETA Prime on this exact subject. In fact, not only is the video on this exact subject is using the exact same Retroflag case that I was just referring to a minute ago, um, and uh, this is exactly what it seems on the tin. This turns the Retroflag case into something that will hold a compute module 4, um, uh, which is, of course, capable of a lot better emulation than a Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, the video takes you through the board, as you can see here. Now, this is the baseboard designed for the compute module to fit onto, and it also takes you through a few examples of it being used as a retro gaming device. Now, ETA Prime being featured on the show is nothing new. It almost became a bit of a joke how often we had him on the show, but then again, he always has the most prescient and detailed videos on retro gaming devices of various kinds, along with other things. Um, and I did find it almost creepy that, uh, like I said, I felt like my mind was read a little bit because I was thinking about this exact thing during the week. Um, but I will leave a link to this description in the video. It is, of course, fantastically detailed, and as well as showing you the build and showing you lots of nice pictures of the device itself, it shows you things like Dreamcast games and PS1 games playing perfectly in a Game Boy form factor. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Um, and in the uh, description of this video, you will also find a link to Retro Game Restore where you can get one of these for yourself if you wish. Finally, on this week's show, a handy reference for LCD drivers from Akim Derbler. Now, this is something I found on the Hackaday blog, as you can see here, and this is uh, essentially talking about Akim's YouTube channel and the uh, handy aforementioned list of uh, display driver controllers. Uh, now, the uh, I will leave a link to the Hackaday article in the description because it has all of the information in it, but there are two sides to this, uh, both of which are very handy little resources. And actually, when I say little, I don't mean particularly little. This is all of the most common display drivers that you will find on various embedded boards and projects. If you have ever taken an LCD um, or an OLED screen off of a board or out of an old device and wanted to use it in a future project and not necessarily known how to, this is going to be a good place to have bookmarked and go back to look at. Because if you find the name of the controller, then there's a high likelihood that there will be information here, at very least as to how it works, and hopefully even a datasheet. Um, now, if I remember correctly, around half of the entries on here have a datasheet. Um, I'm sure if you were to find more and let him know, he would add to this list. But that is not all that Akim Derbler has for us. Because he also has a YouTube channel that I was previously not aware of, which uh, seems to be a treasure trove of short videos on a massive variety of different things. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of them are, as you can see, different displays. Uh, there's a huge number of different displays uh, on display here, along with various different projects covering everything from FPGAs to uh, how to control motors. Um, just a wealth of information going back many, many years. Um, and as mentioned, this is linked in the Hackaday article that I will be linking in the description of this video. I had not come across this channel before, and I'm really looking forward to doing a deep dive and seeing all of the short, but seemingly very, very information dense videos that there are. That was our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, we'll be back next week with a brand new Electromaker show. But in the meantime, if you plan to take part in Arduino Day, have fun. Even if you don't, I wish you a happy, safe and productive week. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.